for over 150 years. Union Pacific's transcontinental mainline has played a key role in the growth and prosperity of the nation. Since the driving of the Golden Spike at Promontory, Utah, the prairies of southern Wyoming have been alive with the humming of steel wheels. Join 7 Idea Productions on a tour of Union Pacific's Rollins and Laramie subdivisions between Green River and Laramie. This rarely visited portion of the overland route sees over 50 trains per day, like hotshot intermodals, monster manifests, coal, soda ash, ethanol, and dozens of locals. The double track mainline takes us on a journey through the pages of history of the American West following the original tracks of the overland stage and crossing the continental divide three times through Wyoming's Great Divide Basin. We will begin at historic Green River and head east for 250 miles visiting Rock Springs. The Jim Bridger Power Plant and the Black Butte Mine. We then cross over the Continental Divide to Wamsutter, then cross it again at Creston, and again at Hansel before arriving at Rollins, where locomotives take on fuel. Entering the Laramie Sub, we will continue east, passing the big refinery at Sinclair, and around the northeast side of the Medicine Bow Mountains before arriving at Laramie. This is two and a half hours of great mainline action over a portion of UP's original stomping grounds. Join us now as we head east to Laramie. Wyoming plays a significant role in the world of railroading, with more traffic originating, terminating, and passing through than any other state of the Union. Union Pacific's overland route traverses the southern portion of the state, serving as a double-track conduit for commerce between east and west. Today's journey begins at Green River, Wyoming, and travels east through Rock Springs, Point of Rocks, and the junction where UP serves the Jim Bridger Power Plant then on to Black Buttes, Bitter Creek, Table Rock, and over the Continental Divide at Tipton, where trains enter Wyoming's Great Divide Basin. The grade drops down through Red Desert to Wamsutter before making the climb again to the Continental Divide at Creston. To the east, it is another downhill run through Reiner, and then one final pull over the Continental Divide just west of Hadsall, and the division point of Rollins. Continuing east on the Laramie Sub, we will pass through Sinclair, Fort Steele, Walcott, Hanna, Medicine Bow, Rock River, and on to Cooper Lake and Bosler before arriving at Laramie, 249.7 miles east of Green River. Castle Rock is the dominant geological feature overlooking the town of Green River, Wyoming. The familiar landmark was forged out of horizontal strata and numerous layers of rock containing a wealth of fossilized fish and plants. Through the years, it has been known by several names, including Citadel, Indian Head Rock, and Green River Butte. To the southwest, the UP mainline makes a crossing of the Green River that dates back to the year the town was first incorporated, 1868. A westbound vehicle train has just made a crew change and departs Green River for Ogden, Utah, over UP's Evanston subdivision.
Green River has a distinction of being incorporated twice. First, in 1868, with the arrival of the first transcontinental railroad. When UP decided to move the division point 12 miles west to Bryan, most of the town's 2,000 residents packed up and moved with it. Green River was on the verge of becoming a ghost town when a drought forced the railroad to again move the division point closer to the Green River and its abundant supply of water for thirsty steam locomotives. Green River was reincorporated and revived on May 5, 1891, while Bryan literally dried up and became a ghost town. As the evening sun casts long shadows across southern Wyoming, UP 7964 leads a westbound intermodal train out of West Green River on track one. UP 2691, a Tier 4 General Electric C45AH, lends its 4,400 horsepower to the effort as the train tackles Peru Hill, its first challenge heading west. The town of Green River prospers for two reasons, the Union Pacific and the mining of trona or soda ash. Unit trains of soda ash from nearby mines originate at Green River for destinations throughout North America. The west end of the yard consists of basic servicing and fueling facilities for locomotives and a car repair shop visible to the right. The main lines are seen to the left or the north end of the yard, past the depot and crew change point, which we will show you in a moment. The east end of the yard contains the sort tracks where trains are flat switched, usually with a pair of refurbished SD40-2s. The yard is made up of 35 tracks, not including the four mains between west and east Green River. Business 80 parallels the north end of the yard, while the Green River itself meanders to the south on a course to meet the Colorado in Utah's Canyonlands National Park. Looking to the east, the yard funnels down to four tracks and then back to a double-track mainline as the Rollins subdivision heads for Laramie. A pedestrian footbridge over the yard gives one a great view of the action as UP 5767 East passes the control point CPG 817, West Green River, and slows to a stop for a crew change. The 
The train passes the classic yard office, tower, and former Amtrak depot as the inbound crew brings the manifest to an easy stop. Green River is an away terminal for crews out of Ogden and Salt Lake City, Utah, plus Pocatello, Idaho to the west. Eastern points include Rollins and Cheyenne, although only faster high-priority trains can go straight through to Cheyenne, which is over 300 miles away. With the last seconds of sunlight glowing on the classic tower, UP 5767 continues its journey east toward Rollins. A lone EMD SD70 ACE works mid-train by remote control. After the train departs, we get a view of the car shop, thanks to the pedestrian bridge. This kind of access is unusual for train yards. However, there is another bridge just like this one that will give us a great view of the yard at our destination in Laramie. Spring rains darken the skies of southern Wyoming as the Rollins subdivision departs Green River in a northeast heading following the twisting course of Bitter Creek for several miles. Railroads often follow the natural path of least resistance offered by rivers, for rivers usually know the best route through the mountains. UP 1995, the heritage unit honoring the former Chicago and Northwestern, leads an eastbound Z train through Canada between Green River and Rock Springs. The next and last town we will encounter for a while is Rock Springs, near milepost 802.5. The classic Union Pacific Passenger Depot dates back to 1900 and is maintained by the city. It is one of two depots that have been restored as part of an effort to preserve Wyoming's railroad history. 
The other is the freight depot, which is located just to the east. Built in 1917, the 100-year-old structure has found new life, hosting community events for the city of Rock Springs. Rock Springs is a railroad town. Where Green River could provide UP steam locomotives with water, Rock Springs supplied them with coal. Large seams of black diamonds are buried beneath the city streets. With the coming of the first transcontinental railroad in 1868, the number one mine opened in downtown Rock Springs, and other mines followed and prospered until the 1950s. Today, mining continues to power the community, and in the coming miles we will pass by the Black Butte Coal Mine and Jim Bridger Power Plant located east of here. East of Rock Springs, the railroad continues to follow Bitter Creek's northeasterly course beneath rocky ridges and over sage-covered flats. UP 8175 has the point of an eastbound stack train running one by one at Baxter. Clouds hover over the low plateaus between Baxter and Salt Wells. Although it doesn't seem like it, we are actually at the 6,300-foot level, climbing through the Rocky Mountains toward the Continental Divide. UP 8613 heads in the opposite direction, westbound for Green River. Several locals run east and west out of Green River. This one is bound for the Jim Bridger power plant near Point of Rocks. The covered hoppers will be filled with fly ash, a byproduct of the coal-fired plant which is often used in the concrete industry. 
UP 2654 heads east between Saltwells Creek and Horse Thief Canyon. Wyoming is considered by many as a barren, desolate place, and the Rollins Sub is nothing more than a steel highway leading trains through a vast and empty land between more interesting locations like the Wasatch Mountains or Sherman Hill. Yet if you spend some time here and get to know the contours of the land illuminated by the ever-changing dance of light and shadows, you might just come away with a different assessment. The crew of an eastbound manifest makes an evening run to Rollins as another day of rail fanning draws to a close. UP 8431 West leads an ethanol train past a forest of code lines near Thayer at milepost 785. Over the past century, the Rollins subdivision has seen its share of line relocations. At Thayer, a westbound enters a big cut added in the late 1940s, while hoppers are stored on the original main line in the distance.
Known today as Thayer Junction, over 12,000 feet of old main line was bypassed to the south in order to reduce the curvature and increase speed. Instead of being removed, it was left as a siding. A string of empty hoppers wait their turn to head back to the Trona Mines west of Green River, while a stacked train races out of the big cut on the newer alignment. The builder's plate gives a date of a nearby bridge over Bitter Creek and a clue to the timing of the relocation just after World War II. To the south of the main line, an older trail meanders through the sage below the rocky cliffs, which predates that of the first transcontinental railroad. This hidden passage is the original route of the overland stage. UP-7739 works east on Main 2, with a soda ash train out of Green River. As the remote-controlled DPUs come into view, a westbound Z train races by on Main 1. A large billboard sign along Interstate 80 announces to motorists the location of Point of Rocks. On the railroad, it's just a junction in the sagebrush near mile post 777. A set out track holds a few covered hoppers spotted for the Jim Bridger power plant, while a clear block on Main 1 calls UP 8727 westward.
Besides the junction for Jim Bridger, Point of Rocks holds a relic of the American West and an interesting piece of history. The Almond Stage Station Built in the summer of 1862 under the direction of Jack Slade, Division Superintendent for the Overland Mail Company, it was designed to accommodate passengers for the Overland Stage. It consisted of a station house with stables which could handle up to four teams. Also known as Rock Point, the station was constructed much like a fortress out of local sandstone with a sod-covered roof in case of an Indian attack. History records that it did survive at least one such attack and a failed attempt to burn it down. The station went on to serve as a stop on the Transcontinental Railroad and later as a private residence. Today, the main station building has been restored by the Wyoming State Parks while the stables remain in a state of ruin. An open window in the stable wall frames an old cemetery where an unsolved piece of history is buried. Seven victims of an 1863 stage robbery lie in unmarked graves below this point. The person blamed for the murder was Jack Slade, the same man who built the station. Slade was lynched in Virginia City, Montana the following year, but his involvement in the murders was never proven. The case remains unsolved. It's only evidence resting in the sagebrush just south of the main line. An eastbound Los Angeles to Denver Z train with stacks and UPS trailers passes the Y at Point of Rocks, while angry thunderclouds build overhead. In the distance, a loaded coal train slowly makes its way up the Jim Bridger Industrial Lead with coal from the nearby Black Butte Mine. Here is a similar sequence standing a bit closer to the Y. Eastbound UPS train races past on Main 2, while the empty Jim Bridger coal train waits to enter Main 1. UP 7397 has finished the unloading process at the nearby power plant and will recruit at the junction before returning to the Black Butte Mine, just 10 miles to the east. Green River crews run this train five days a week. It varies between 60 and 100 cars based on demand at Jim Bridger. This afternoon's forecast is for scattered thunderstorms across southern Wyoming, and a fast-moving storm cell announces its intentions over Dead Man Wash. UP 8654 heads east through the driving rain.
The storm dissipates as quickly as it arrived, and we are back to filming on the overland route. UP 8245 East leads a domestic stack train past milepost 775. From Point of Rocks, the Rollins subdivision pulls away from Interstate 80, turning to the south at Dead Man Wash and taking the same course as the Overland Trail. Before disappearing from view, the stack train meets UP 8203 West. At milepost 774, the main line curves with the course of Bitter Creek beneath large mud cliffs, under which lie deposits of coal. An eastbound manifest powered by UP 8344, an EMD SD70 ACE, and UP 5713, an older GE C44 9 AC, glides through the high speed curves found here.
Continuing east, the rough features of the mud cliffs fill the backdrop as UP-7852 heads for Rollins. In the 35-mile stretch between Point of Rocks and Robinson, the railroad follows its own course through the lonely country. The only sound between passing trains is that of the nearly constant breeze. UP 5371 leads an empty grain train east near Hallville. The empty grain train meets UP 7895 West on a tangent stretch of track at Hallville, the site of a former coal mine. The mine was short-lived, opening in 1869 and shutting down the following year. The nearby Black Butte mine was opened at the same time and seems to have fared better since it is still in operation. UP 8400 East heads through Hallville, sporting a colorful lash-up of pool power, including CSX 5388 and NS 9063. Just west of Black Buttes, 
UP 7205 heads east with a special high and wide move. Note all the spacer cars between the loads. Large components for mines and power plants aren't the only special loads found on the Rollins sub. UP 5252 West includes 12 brand new John Deere tractors tucked into a cut of auto racks on the head end. Let's back up just a little bit. Earlier, we showed you the Jim Bridger coal train entering the main line at Point of Rocks. The train is now recruited and heading toward the Black Butte coal mine to be loaded. It is sent up the westbound number one track for a short sprint to the mine. This train runs the wrong main for its 10-mile sprint to the mine, located just around the curve ahead. On main 2, we can just make out a vehicle train in the distance. At Black Buttes, the UP-7397 enters the balloon track and will soon begin the loading process. The three big silos can store up to 40,500 tons of coal from three active mining areas, and trains can be loaded from them at a rate of 6,000 tons per hour. Since we have some time to kill during the loading process, let's take a look at one of the most interesting machines used in surface mining the drag line. With a boom measuring over 200 feet in length and a bucket the size of a garage, the drag line is one of the largest movable machines on earth. It is used to remove topsoil and overburden, exposing coal seams for extraction. Unlike smaller excavators, drag lines like this Bucyrus Erie are powered by electricity, relying on a direct connection to the high voltage grid. Picture a great big extension cord. The drag line bucket is held by cables and dragged along the ground to grab a bite of material. It is able to cover a radius roughly the length of a football field. Operators refer to these machines as walkers since they do not use tracks. Large metal feet are used to reposition the drag line at a snail's pace of just one-tenth of a mile per hour. 
Although the Black Butte coal mine is not open to the public, currently there is a great view of the drag line in operation from a portion of an old highway which parallels Interstate 80 between Point of Rocks and Bitter Creek Road. During our visit, the drag line was only operated on weekdays. At night, it stood like a giant Christmas tree among the buttes. After being extracted, coal is hauled to a crusher before heading to the storage silos for a train ride. An overland conveyor belt system carries the coal from the active mining areas along with large haul trucks. The miles of belts are protected from the elements, allowing coal to be moved safely to the silos at a storage recharge rate of around 3,000 tons per hour. The elaborate highway of black diamonds flies over service roads and the UP mainline before finally being received by the patiently waiting hoppers. While waiting for the train to finish loading, we check out some of the action on the main line. UP 8405 East takes a stack train through Black Buttes. The Black Butte Coal Company was formed in 1974 and has been shipping coal since 1979. It currently handles around 3 million tons per year. While the Jim Bridger train continues around the balloon track, a high-priority UPS train passes on Main 1 behind UP 2734. It is now mid-afternoon, 
and our coal train is ready to head for the Jim Bridger power plant at Point of Rocks. A massive water truck keeps the dust down on the cinder roads made for large haul trucks. During our visit, the big trucks were not seen in the vicinity of the loadout since they can feed the conveyor from a distant location closer to the mines. UP 7927 has permission to enter Main 1 and proceed west to Jim Bridger with around 60 loads of coal. The hoppers are lettered JBPX and are owned by the Jim Bridger power plant. Returning to Point of Rocks, the train enters the Jim Bridger Industrial Lead at milepost 776. It's a slow crawl over the 8.2 mile line at a maximum speed of 10 miles per hour. The track crosses Interstate 80 on a girder deck bridge. The final step in the mining process is reclamation. That is what is going on here at a mine site just south of the power plant. Two scrapers, a grader, and a set of disks are adding finishing touches to the topsoil as what used to be grazing land for cattle and wildlife is returned to its original state. A D8 Caterpillar dozer assists the scraper while grabbing a load of earth. Named for 19th century mountain man and explorer James Felix Bridger, 
This facility can produce over 2 million kilowatts of electricity per hour. That's enough to power three cities the size of Salt Lake City. The four stacks rise above four generating units, which produce electricity, consuming up to 1,100 tons of coal per hour at full load. The coal comes from two sources, the Black Butte Mine by rail and the Jim Bridger Mine via a four-mile-long conveyor. Water is also supplied from the Green River through a 50-mile-long pipeline. Although it isn't apparent from these images, the plant was under a partial shutdown for routine maintenance during our visit. A concrete marker identifies the old overland trail just east of Black Buttes and a stage station of the same name was located in the vicinity. A westbound UPS train races out of Patrick Draw and along the north bank of Bitter Creek. A pair of old wooden boxcars serve as outbuildings along the side of Patrick Draw Road. Due north is the former Y-Track and sidings of Bitter Creek, marked by the remnants of a large water tank which once replenished thirsty steam locomotives for the climb to the Continental Divide. Another just like it still exists at Wham Center, 40 miles to the east. Part of the old Y-Track remains as a spur used occasionally by maintenance of way. There are two sidings. The north siding measures 10,412 feet, and the south breaks a tape measure at 10,843 feet in length. UP 2541 heads west for Green River. Bitter Creek is situated in the Patrick Draw oil field below Table Rock. The ancient landmark looks down over a pair of pump jacks performing the monotonous task of sipping crude from the ground below. Southern Wyoming may appear desolate and empty, yet the state is rich in natural resources beneath the surface, contributing to the nation's mineral and energy production. The region is rich in oil, natural gas, uranium, and coal. 
Large hydrocarbon accumulations in the area between Rock Springs and Wamsutter along the Continental Divide provide regions like Patrick Draw with the necessary ingredients for oil and gas production. Above ground, over 13 species of sagebrush along with other wild grasses provide good grazing for antelope, deer, and wild horses. This region is part of Wyoming's Red Desert, which encompasses over 9,300 square miles. At this point, the Rollins Sub parts company with Bitter Creek in favor of a more northeasterly heading toward the Continental Divide at Tipton. As spring rains descend upon the sage-covered hills, UP 8840 sprints west with a heavy grain train. Moments later, UP 8003 East races through Bitter Creek on Main 2. As the Rollins subdivision makes its way up the west flank of the Continental Divide, it leaves Patrick Draw in a northeast heading, avoiding the steep mud cliffs and washes to the south. The two main tracks split on separate grades while passing through the ghost town of Table Rock near milepost 746. The town was built in the late 1970s by the Colorado Interstate Gas Company to house workers free of charge during a natural gas boom. The town lasted until 2003 when it was purchased by another corporation that decided not to operate the village. Around 80 people lived in Table Rock at that time and many moved to Rock Springs. The houses were demolished in 2011. The only visible activity today is that of pump jacks sipping black gold from underground. The first known sale of oil in Wyoming happened in 1863 when entrepreneurs sold oil from hand-dug wells as lubricant to wagon train travelers along the Oregon Trail. Twenty years later, Pennsylvanian Mike Murphy sold oil from a shallow well he dug near Casper to the Union Pacific for lubricating train axles. Still others found the black oozy mess on their land a nuisance for farming and ranching and moved elsewhere. UP 7739 East takes a soda ash train through Table Rock on Main 1.
Just after sunset, an eastbound manifest takes the same route. As the train slips into the night, another day of rail fanning draws to a close. Although it doesn't seem like a crossing of the Rocky Mountains, the Continental Divide is first reached at Tipton, milepost 739.8. An old spur track contains a petroleum loading platform for tank cars that doesn't seem to have been used recently. It is located just north of the main, near the top of the grade. UP 7752 West approaches the Continental Divide as it takes a manifest past the crossovers at Tipton. The remote control DPUs begin throttling down as the train crests the Continental Divide just west of our location. Within seconds, we have another surprise visit from UP 1995. The Chicago and Northwestern Heritage Unit is on the point of train ZLADV, a Los Angeles to Denver shooter. It is one of three heritage units you'll see today. The rest are still to come.
East of Tipton, trains enter a hole in the Continental Divide, known as Wyoming's Great Divide Basin. UP 8654 West passes Red Desert. The Great Divide Basin covers nearly 4,000 square miles of southern Wyoming. Water from rain and melting snow is trapped by the Continental Divide, unable to drain into any ocean. The only way out is by evaporation. The other way water could escape at one time was in the boiler of a steam locomotive. A classic water tank remains at Wham Sutter, near milepost 725. UP 7417 East slowly passes the water tank on Main 2. The train is traveling at restricted speed due to maintenance of way just east of here. Wham Sutter is the only incorporated town in Wyoming's Great Divide Basin and bills itself as the gateway to the Red Desert. UP 7361 heads west past the classic water tank. Out of Wamsutter, the railroad climbs to the next summit of Creston. Milepost 716 marks the crossing of Latham Road, just four miles from the top of the grade. UP 8035 sprints west with a combination of foreign and domestic containers. Within minutes, UP 8257 heads east toward Rollins with a high-priority Z-train.
Classic Wyoming snow fences protect the cut at the top of the grade at Creston. Considered by the railroad as the Continental Divide at an elevation of 7,107 feet. A lone Jeevo UP2730 is on the point of an eastbound stack train. Preston feels like being on top of the world, with no other mountains around it and nothing to stop the constant wind that nearly drowns out the sound of approaching trains, like UP 8097 East. Once over the grade, the empty rack train picks up speed as it heads for the next crossing of the Continental Divide at Hadsall, just west of Rollins. UP 8706 and 6891 are on the point of a westbound grain train as they climb through Creston on the number one track. The near track leads to a former Y, which is all but gone. UP 6409, a former Southern Pacific GE number 363, handles the rear of the train by remote control. It was painted into UP colors in 2015. Late in the afternoon, an officer special heads through Creston powered by UP 1943 the spirit of the Union Pacific. The locomotive's paint scheme reflects all branches of the military. The special train is returning to Omaha after a West Coast run. Time and the constant breeze have taken their toll on this telegraph pole, 
which in a bit of role reversal is now held up by the code lines. Near sunset, a heavy North Platte manifest train lumbers over the summit behind two GE C44-9 ACs, UP 6872 and 6046. Two SD-70 ACEs work as remote-controlled swing helpers on this heavy manifest, one of which is our third heritage unit, UP-1989, honoring the former Denver and Rio Grande Western. This portion of the overland route has seen its share of relocations since its completion in 1869. Much of the line from Wamsutter to a point west of Rollins was realigned to reduce the maximum grade and curvature, and is very apparent here between Reiner and Hadsall. Standing on part of the old railroad grade, the newer fill stands about 60 feet higher. A forlorn hopper car rests at the scene of a derailment its contents of what appears to be soda ash spilled down the north side. UP 8840 heads west out of the big cut at Hadsall with more hoppers, this time loaded with grain.
In the rush to meet the Central Pacific during the construction of the first transcontinental railroad, Union Pacific built 500 miles of track in the year 1868 between Laramie in the Wyoming Territory and Wasatch in Utah Territory. Neither would become a state until the 1890s. UP 8339 heads east toward the final crossing of the Continental Divide at Hatzel and passes the intermediate signals at milepost 693. A string of older wood chip gondolas are found mid-train, including two still in Burlington Northern's Cascade Green. Since wood chips do not have much mass, the cars can be built rather large when compared to coal or cement hoppers. Besides wood chips, which are used for paper making, these cars can also carry cottonseed, which is processed into pellets for feeding livestock. Trains pass through a big cut and arrive at Hadsall, crossing the Continental Divide at an elevation of 6,910 feet above sea level. Three old GE warriors, led by UP-6860, drag an empty grain train over the top. The engineer and conductor are now just a few minutes from arriving at the crew change point of Rollins.
Rollins, Wyoming, appears as milepost 682.8 on the UP timetable. The 1901 built depot handled passengers traveling the overland route via the Union Pacific and later three different Amtrak trains. The city of San Francisco. For a brief time between 1971 and 72, the San Francisco Zephyr from 1972 to 1983, and finally the Pioneer between 1991 and 1997 when passenger service ended. Today it houses office space for the city of Rollins. The depot is at the west end of UP's Rollins Yard. This is the eastern terminus for the Rollins subdivision, and many trains change crews near the fueling racks just east of the depot. Faster, high-priority trains push through onto Cheyenne without changing crews, but still stop here for fuel. Diesel is pumped to Rollins via an underground pipeline from a nearby refinery in Sinclair. Strobe lights near the platforms are activated to warn approaching trains when fueling personnel are present, and the usual blue flags are hung from locomotives during the process. While UP 7898 West takes on fuel on Main 1, UP 5353 West pulls to a stop on Main 2. A small group of rail fans are on hand to catch the action. Topped off and ready to proceed, UP 7898 departs for Green River with a fresh crew. After refueling, UP 4010 East ducks under a signal bridge near the east end of the yard. On average, over 50 trains per day travel the line between Laramie and Green River. With traffic in both directions stopping for fuel, Rollins can become a bottleneck and therefore is a good place to visit if you're looking for rail activity. UP 5870 East passes under a second signal bridge between Rollins and Sinclair.
UP-7647 blasts out of Rollins with a UPS train. It meets UP-8123 West, which will soon recrew and refuel. Sinclair is milepost 675.8 on the Laramie Sub. Built as a planned community in 1924, it was originally called PARCO, short for Producers and Refiners Corporation, which founded the nearby refinery. Wanting to create a beautiful oasis in the desert, the town was built in the Spanish colonial revival style. The centerpiece of the town was the first National Bank building, which today is restored as a museum. During the Great Depression, the refinery was purchased by Sinclair Consolidated Oil and the town assumed the new name. The Sinclair refinery handles up to 85,000 barrels of oil per day, making it one of the largest in the Rocky Mountain region. Products produced here include propane, gasoline, jet fuel, diesel, and road asphalt. It serves customers in eight western states. Served by the UP, an expanding yard is located north of the main line. UP 7932 East passes the impressive facility.
After leaving Rollins, the Laramie subdivision heads nearly due east toward a crossing of the North Platte River at Fort Steele. Established on June 20, 1868, Fort Steele housed troops whose job was to protect the builders of the first transcontinental railroad from Indian attacks. Named for Civil War hero Major General Frederick Steele, the military post eventually included a sawmill, blacksmith, and a store in addition to officers' quarters, barracks, and other buildings. The fort was decommissioned in August of 1886. The ruins of the fort are found today on the north side of the main. Some of the old buildings have been reconstructed, and the site can be visited during the summer months. This powder magazine or munitions building was built some distance from the fort for safety and is the only original structure that is still intact. On the far bank of the North Platte, a sawmill once supplied lumber for the fort and ties for the Union Pacific. Remnants of the old sawmill can still be seen among the cottonwoods on the east bank. UP 6062 East takes a manifest over the North Platte River. UP 8850 West passes Fort Steele with double stacks for the West Coast. Later on in the day, UP 4302 also heads west with a Z. East of Fort Steele, trains roll through the unincorporated community of Walcott at milepost 662.3. This was at one time known as Walcott Junction, with a UP branch line which ran south into Colorado. In later years, it was operated by the Wyoming-Colorado Railroad to a sawmill at Saratoga, 24 miles to the south. The line was abandoned in the early 2000s, leaving the name Walcott Junction to fade into history.
The prominent landmark between Rollins and Laramie is Elk Mountain. With a height of 11,162 feet, it is the northernmost summit of the Medicine Bow Range. Timber from the mountain once supplied the mill at Fort Steele. The railroad follows the relatively easy topography of the land around the north and east side of the mountain en route to the Laramie Valley. West of Hanna, the double track main passes through a series of deep cuts and high speed curves, allowing train speeds of 60 to 70 miles per hour. UP 7817 is eastbound for Cheyenne. During our visit, Thai gangs were busy across the overland route, which seemed to be covered in a forest of Thai bundles that stretched from Ogden to Laramie. UP 4324 leads another UPS train slowly westward through the Form B work limits at Hanna. The town of Hanna lies in the distance. It started as a coal supply location for the railroad. The population peaked around 1980 at around 2,200 people and has been in decline in recent decades due to the closing of local coal mines. The first day of May found southern Wyoming covered in a thin blanket of white from recent snows. An eastbound traverses the winter-like scene as the railroad loosely follows its original course between Ramsey and Medicine Bow. The icy north flank of Elk Mountain disappears into the gray sky as the train continues eastward toward the Laramie Mountains. On the Laramie subdivision timetable, Medicine Bow is simply referenced as milepost 624.5. The tiny depot was built in 1913 and served as a passenger waiting room, office, baggage room, as well as a living quarters for the station master and his family. It served in that capacity until 1981 and today houses a museum. The other notable landmark is the historic Virginian Hotel, which was built between 1901 and 1911. At that time, it was the biggest hotel between Denver and Salt Lake City. The classic building still greets travelers who choose the leisurely drive up the old Lincoln Highway to the faster-paced interstate, which reroutes traffic several miles to the south. To railroaders, 
Medicine Bow is one of only a handful of grade crossings between Laramie and Rollins. UP 9072 sprints west. Three GEs led by UP 7510 take an eastbound Z through Medicine Bow. After leaving Medicine Bow, the Laramie Sub begins to take a more southeasterly heading that will keep the Medicine Bow Mountains to the southwest and the promise of smooth running down the Laramie Valley somewhere ahead. UP 2729 winds through the S-curves at milepost 611 west of Wilcox. UP 7513 lugs a heavy soda ash train through the same curves with Elk Mountain looking on in the background.
The crossover is at Wilcox, mark milepost 609. UP 8967 powers a UPS train west. After dipping south through Rock River, the railroad climbs the north bank of Lower Pine Ridge. Westbound UP 7839 slaloms through a reverse S curve. Another eastbound soda ash train is seen again skirting the bluffs of Lower Pine Ridge and passing the crossovers simply known as CPW 601. On a clear spring morning, we climb up the ridge in time to catch UP 8962 East with another soda ash train out of Green River.
Canadian National number 8802 is the lone DPU on this train. Notice the red marker light on the back of the engine. Canadian National units use this feature to mark remote controlled locomotives on rear of trains. UP 8330 West drops down through the same big cut at milepost 600. Trains continue running southeast through Harper and Lookout as the railroad approaches the course of the Laramie River. In dynamics, UP 8381 glides down a slight grade with a soda ash train at Cooper Lake. Two DPU swing helpers come into view, including CN3831, a GE ES44AC. The train meets UP 7457 westbound running two by one. The snow-covered Laramie Mountains appear in the background.
The railroad crosses the Laramie River near milepost 576 at Howell. After traveling 250 miles across southern Wyoming, we finally arrive at Laramie, milepost 565.4. It is named after Jacques Laramie, a French-Canadian trapper who disappeared in the nearby mountains in the early 1800s. It was one of many new towns that sprang up with the building of the Transcontinental Railroad. A small steam locomotive and vintage rolling stock decorate Railroad Heritage Park adjacent to the main line and the yard. In the steam days, Laramie was a busy place where some of the biggest steam locomotives on earth once stopped to take on coal and water. Like Green River, Laramie has a pedestrian footbridge which crosses the yard, giving one a great vantage point. There is a rail welding plant and a few cars are still switched here, but the majority of trains pass through town without stopping. The yard and old downtown bask in the cool evening sunlight, while an eastbound stack train led by UP 8754 passes on the main. Soon it'll be starting up the grade over Sherman Hill, but that's a story for another time. You have probably noticed all the new pink containers with the letters O-N-E. It stands for Ocean Network Express and was formed in 2016 as a joint venture between several companies including NYK, MOL, and K-Line. They are currently the sixth largest container shipping business in the world, putting them above Evergreen, Yang Ming, and Hyundai. As O-N-E continues to grow, we can expect more pink containers in the future. UP 5569 takes more containers west on Main 2. It meets our final train of the day, UP 8116 East.
For many rail fans, the route we have just explored is often passed over in favor of more well-known locations such as nearby Sherman Hill or the Wasatch Mountains of Utah. Yet there is a great deal to see, learn, and enjoy if one dares to venture off the beaten path. We hope you've enjoyed this look at UP's trek across southern Wyoming over rails that lead east to Laramie. Until next time, thanks for watching.